Hey brother, sorry that my last video to you did not turn out with the sound and so I'm gonna make another one. And I have some hard things to say and I hope you can hear it in the spirit it's given which is of love and brotherly challenge and care for you and your relationship and your family. I really want the best for you and the things I have to say, I believe from experience, will actually help you get there. Now, when I look at your posts, I see the same thing I see in the posts, to be honest, of men who do not get what they want. Did that scare you a little bit? I hope it did. I hope it, I hope it actually gave you enough sober pause to pay attention to what I'm saying. I look at the lives of hundreds of men a year. I'm privileged to be able to walk with a number of them, and I've seen a lot of patterns in that time. And a pattern I consistently see in men who do not get the outcome they want. They do not get a restored relationship. They do not get uh, to, to stay married. They don't get to, to, to keep their kids 100% of the time. They all have generally one thing in common. And that is they refuse to stop looking at what their partner is doing. You see, what they are is extremely focused on, is she doing this? Is she doing that? What is she doing? What is she not doing? What is, gonna, what is she thinking? What is she not thinking? What happens next? They are just completely outward and external. And so I want you to go back through your post. And what you did is you gave a little bit of lip service to, I'm doing my work, I'm doing my work, and... She, 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 she. See, the word she in another man's post on groups like Facebook, mentoring men, um, really anywhere, even their emails, a she-focused man is a man on his way to failure. The reason he's, way, he's on his way to failure is because he's living a life where the life he wants is not within himself, it's in her. It's in what she does next, what she thinks, what she doesn't think, what she thinks about him, etc. In, in psychological terms and even in the renewed masculine man terms, this man has an extreme external locus of control. Really, so much of the life he wants is actually, in his mind, in the decisions and actions, behaviors, thoughts, and emotions of other people, specifically his wife. And until he stops that, until he lets that go, because the power is not within him, but someone else, he won't have that power. He will live in the continued powerlessness. He will live in a story of despair, one of waiting, one of limbo, one of anguish, one of hard emotions, all because everything he wants is outside of his power to control. Now, I'm not suggesting we can control everything. What I am suggesting is we can control a hell of a lot of stuff that happens in our lives when we understand that it's happening internally, not externally. We have to break the addiction to believing that life happens to us. It does not. Life happens in us. There's not a circumstance that will come into your life with, that does not include an element where you decide on what your experience of that circumstance is. I'm not saying we control the circumstances in and around us, right? But I do get to pick and control how I experience that. In Viktor Frankl's work, this is a, this is a great example of that. Viktor Frankl spent time in a Nazi concentration camp. Now, he had no agency in deciding whether or not he was going to experience that Nazi concentration camp. But what Viktor Frankl learned, and what I want you to learn is, he had every possibility and power of deciding how he would experience it. And he did, and he learned great things. And while his comrades around him were suffering deeply, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, etc., Viktor Frankl actually turned that into something quite remarkable. He found a way to find meaning in it that turned that suffering even into a form of thriving. And it gave birth 
really to a great work in his book, Man's Search for a Meaning. It gave birth to something called logotherapy. And this is what you and I can do. We can't change many of our circumstances, but I can change how I live in them. And the number one change I need to have in all my circumstances in order to flourish and in order to enjoy um, peace and fullness within is to understand that they're happening in me and to focus on my experience of those things. But you see, the anxious mind, the brain is not like this. It wants to focus outside of itself. It wants to focus on your wife. It wants to focus on what time she comes home, how much she's looking at her phone, her emails, her, how much she's dialed up uh, when she leaves, how she looks at other men, the words she says. It's externally focused and it's obsessively focused on her, 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 she, 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 she right? This is where you're struggling. And until you actually stop that shit, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better because you're looking for answers in the wrong place, brother. You have got to stop looking at she. You have to start looking at only me. Now, some people cannot comprehend this because they say, well, I am looking at me, but they're also looking at her. I'm not talking about 90% looking at yourself. I'm not talking about 95% looking at yourself. I'm not talking about 99.99999% looking at yourself. You have to look 100% at yourself. That means stop entirely focusing on what is happening in other people. Most of all, your wife. Now, every guy says to me at this point, yeah, but if I do that, how will I know blah, 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 blah. Well, that's the thing. You don't need to know that. What you need to know is that you don't control all those things and you never will. You'll never get even a smidgen of certainty of, about your life from what other people say and do and think and feel. That's just a huge delusion. You'll never actually find an answer there. Nobody gets certainty about the future. Most of all, certainty about their future from other people. That's just a great big lie. And so you don't need to know what's going on in her. You need to know what's going on in you. And is there anything inside of you that needs attending? Is there anything in you that you could choose to experience differently? Is there any suffering in you that's unnecessary because you have the power and capacity to see those circumstances differently. And when you let go of trying to manage all these things outside of you, like your wife, what you'll find is freedom. You'll find a tremendous amount of freedom. You'll also find that in doing so, you accept. You accept yourself and you accept her. Now, don't mistake acceptance for approval. I'm not saying you need to approve what she does. Just that you accept it, meaning you stop needing it to be different than it is. And that it, you just say, you know what? This is right now what it is in her life. I have no uh, basis to judge her or those things. That's her life. I'm gonna focus on mine. When a guy does that and he gets busy living his own life, and the reason I'm looking over here is like pretend she's over here. He doesn't see what's going on, which means she doesn't feel scrutinized. And she feels that as a tremendous pressure release. Only a woman who feels that pressure release, who feels acceptance, who doesn't feel scrutinized, judged, and obsessed over, can come near you. You have no chance of being with a woman who you obsess and express anxious energy over. That's anxious attachment, and anxious attachment always produces an avoidant. That's exactly what you have, and you're going to get more of it until you let go of that attachment. And to let go of that attachment, brother, you have to turn all that outward focus inward. 100%. No percent focused on her. I know that's going to be hard for you. But that opportunity to shift from focusing outwardly 
to inwardly is your opportunity to grow and mature as a man. I would suggest that's what this is all for because we're not intended as human beings to live focused on what other people do so that we can make decisions about me. We don't actually have that dependency. We're not made to have that dependency. And the moment I create those dependencies, I create suffering. When I, when I create a narrative inside of me that can only happen when there's something happens inside of you, I just linked us together in an unhealthy way. And I, did, I linked us together in a way that now demands something of you for me to have the life I want. That means your life is now about servitude to me. Does that sound like a good idea? Does that sound endearing? Does that sound like it's going to invite intimacy and closeness and connection? No. It invites you wanting to move away from me in resentment for me expecting or believing that your life is about me. That's exactly what happens in a woman. And so you need to let go, entirely let go. Stop needing certainty, stop needing answers, and just let it all go. And then work on being really good in that space of letting go. Learn to sit there patiently, diligently, every day, going through life, just like, hey, today I'm looking at me. Tomorrow, looking at me. Next day, looking at me. When you do that, you'll find people can approach you. People can connect with you because you're not seeking these unhealthy dependency connections in them. And that's when you become a man who can actually have a deeply thriving, connected, intimate, and passionate relationship. I hope this has helped you. Again, sorry that my first video didn't work out. And keep talking to your mentor about these things. I know they can keep helping you with this. And keep avoiding she. Keep avoiding her. Right? Those answers are not there, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.